Today, as we assess the state of our state and look ahead to the challenges of 2009, I can't help but feel an overwhelming sense of pride in the people of New Jersey. Despite the challenges of today's national economic crisis, the people of our state are pushing forward and building better schools, broadening the access to health care, making our streets safer, and building a more secure world. Our determination remains strong, our drive is undiminished, and our work ethic knows no bounds. We are a creative, can-do people with a fortitude and spirit. We know we will work through today's challenging times. Despite the economic tsunami that's engulfing the nation, I believe that the character and the fundamentals of our state are equal to any task. We generate the highest incomes in the nation. We educate our children, schools that are the envy of others. We maintain a highly respected justice system. We provide a strong safety net for our most vulnerable. And we've always welcomed newcomers from other shores, embracing the values of diversity and pluralism. New Jerseyans are tough and resilient, and we're fighting back against a national economic recession exceeded in depth and duration only by the Great Depression of the 1930s. We see that spirit in every public school, every senior center, every hospital, and every place where people come together day by day to reaffirm what I think we all believe is a basic truth. We are our brother's keeper. We are our sister's keeper. People also came together last November 4th when our citizens in record numbers voted overwhelmingly to elect Barack Obama our next president of the United States. In doing so, our voters embraced a new vision for America, a progressive vision, one we share in New Jersey. In fact, it's a vision we've been working on for the last three years, a vision that we must responsibly share our economic bounty, that all of our children deserve a thorough and efficient education, that health care is, right, is a right, that we have a moral responsibility to be good stewards of the earth. Barack Obama's vision is our vision. And now, thankfully, starting next Tuesday, New Jerseyans have a partner in Washington, a partner who will join us in pursuing a common vision. Change is in the air. With that change, I truly believe that as a nation and as a state, our best days lie ahead. That said, it's impossible to ignore the deep challenges we face today. We've been in the grips of a national recession since the fall of 2007. Our country's financial system hovers near collapse. Home values, personal savings, and the securities markets have plunged. National unemployment rate has soared to over 7 percent, with expectations of a 9 to 10 percent rate in the year ahead. Our citizens' economic security has been compromised. Our people didn't cause this meltdown. Its causes are beyond their control and are national and even global in scope. The cost of this colossal economic meltdown is far more than the trillions of dollars of lost value in securities markets and economic production. It goes well beyond any batch of statistics. Costs must be understood in the pain and anxiety of our neighbors of everyday people across the state. And when good people are at the end of the rope, they need to know that government's there to lend a helping hand. I wish I could say the impact of the national recession is limited to these few stories, but it's not. Food pantry calls are up 30 percent to 40 percent across the state. 48,000 New Jerseyans received foreclosure notices in 2008, and their ranks are growing. The number of unemployed and uninsured is exploding. It is in this context that we have made the economy priority number one, priority number two, and priority number three. It's also in the human context that we've initiated efforts to combat hunger, to provide home heating and utility assistance, to offer legal aid, and to address the foreclosure crisis through mediation and financial assistance. Frankly, our foreclosure prevention initiatives, ones that we've worked on together with this body, are a model for the nation. We are making a difference. Similarly, New Jersey is at the forefront of the nation's efforts 
to provide health care to our citizens. With the Bush when the Bush administration tried to kick 10,000 kids out of the New Jersey's family care program, we said no. Back here in Trenton, instead of throwing children out of health care, we expanded our program to cover every child and have enrolled more working and moderate income families than ever before. Another critical element of our health system is our network and community health centers, which serve almost 350,000 uninsured or underinsured New Jerseyans. We need these centers today more than ever as more people lose their insurance or struggle with their out-of-pocket expenses. That's why we increased our reimbursement rates and provided additional funding, grant funding. One network that will be receiving grant support is community health care which operates 17 facilities in Cumberland, Gloucester, and Cape May County. Community will be using these funds to expand innovative prenatal care, helping women maintain healthy pregnancies while reducing infant mortality. I'm proud that the state has been able to partner with private institutions like community, even as we've had to make major cuts to balance the budget. I don't have to tell you, you can recall quite vividly, the fiscal 2000 and nine budget cut spending by $600 million year over year. As we anticipated a gathering national recession and shrink shrinking revenues. By the close of the calendar year, the deepening recession had required us to cut spending by another $800 million. That's a total of $1.4 billion in cuts in this fiscal year alone. Let me repeat, $1.4 billion not in the rate of growth, but in absolute dollars. It's been painful, and we've had to make many ugly choices. But together with my partners in the legislature, we are making the hard choices. Just as we've taken action to discipline spending and shore up New Jersey's safety net for our most vulnerable, we've also built a foundation for future economic recovery. We began by offering small and mid-sized businesses $3,000 for each new job created over the next year. Additionally, wherever I go, small business owners tell me they're having trouble getting loans. That's why we're encouraging new lending through innovative credit facilities and placing deposits with New Jersey's community-oriented banks. Most importantly, we're creating jobs by accelerating public investments in roads, bridges, school construction, and the new mass transit tunnel under the Hudson. In the next year alone, we're committing, and this is before any federal infrastructure investment program, we're committing $4.7 billion in high return investments, saving or creating as many as 42,000 New Jersey jobs. We all know that infrastructure matters. We saw the high cost of failure in Minneapolis and New Orleans. These investments not only create jobs today, that will provide returns for all New Jerseyans tomorrow. Just talk to the students I visited in the Oliver Street School in Newark. Their building is overcrowded and crumbling. Classes in English as a second language are held in the hallway. Special education classes are crammed into windowless coat closet. Oliver Street School was built in 1869. Can we really expect? our children to learn and to grow to their fullest potential when their classrooms are in a closet. That's why I fought to authorize $3.9 in new school construction funds, and I'm proud of it. Money that can be leveraged into $5.4 in investments across the state. Through all of these initiatives, we're planting the seeds for future prosperity. We're positioning as many people and businesses as possible to survive the national recession and then thrive once the inevitable recovery begins. And it will. We structurally reformed our oft-criticized corporate tax code, reforms that will encourage investment in research and development, reforms that will allow businesses to recoup operating losses and competitively align our rates with those of surrounding states. While we are reducing corporate taxes, we've also expanded the senior freeze on property taxes to include 70,000 additional senior households. And something that gets very little focus on, we've continued to expand the earned income tax credit, making work pay. Let me repeat, getting our state through this national economic crisis is my number one, number two, and number three priority.